Hello FPL managers and welcome back for another video. My name's Jack and today we're going to go over the knee-jerk reaction for Game Week 13. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show your support for the channel and also click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. Also look out for FPL Social which is a live in-person FPL event coming up in Melbourne in February of next year. We're going to be there so if you guys want tickets or more information click the link in the description and with that being said let's jump into the video. So in today's video we're going to go over the most transferred in and transferred out players so far this game week and give you guys a recommendation as to whether or not you should go with the crowd and bring these players into your teams or release them from your squads. First of all, starting off with the most transferred in players coming to Game Week 13, it is Phil Foden. He obviously does have the blank Game Week in Game Week 12, as Manchester City and Arsenal don't have their fixture this Game Week, but I do think those Manchester City players are going to be great assets to have from Game Weeks 13 through 16. Phil Foden, he's been in great form recently. In Game Week 9, he got himself a hat-trick. In Game Week 10, he then backed that up with a goal and an assist. He was unfortunate not to get any returns in Game Week 11 with a disallowed goal. Plus, he did look very creative from open play. There seemed to be a lot of attacking movement for Manchester City going through his side. He definitely was one of their better attackers in this game. So I definitely think at around £8 million, Phil Foden is a great little mid-price midfielder option to have in the squad, especially since most managers did move on Kevin De Bruyne to Mo Salah in game week, uh, game week 12. sorry. So I do think if you don't have enough money in the squad to get Kevin De Bruyne back in, I think Phil Foden is a great midfield replacement, and he's been in great form recently. He's been matching uh, De Bruyne for points, if not outscoring him over the last three to four game weeks. So it's a definitely a great option to have in the side, and probably one of the best mid-price midfielder picks in FPL right now. Speaking of other good mid uh, mid price midfielder picks, Bakayo Saka has been in great form for Arsenal. He's actually returned in six out of his last seven games for the Gunners, so definitely made a slower start to the season, but that has improved dramatically over the last seven or so game weeks for them. Arsenal do have some very good fixtures coming up from game weeks 13 through 16. Out of four games, three matches have an FDI rating of just two, so definitely some nice fixtures to target for those Arsenal players. And Bakayo Saka's ownership isn't too high. It's sitting at around 15% right now so he could prove to be a nice differential to Phil Foden if you already have Foden in the team and you want to capitalize on those good Arsenal fixtures I think Saka's got the form and fixtures plus a decently low ownership to see a nice rank increase for your team Looking at Gabriel Martinelli, another more popular pick from Arsenal, another very decent value option at £6.7 million right now. Of course, as we touched on, those Arsenal fixtures are very good, with three out of the four matches having an FDA rating of just two. He's one that's been in excellent form for Arsenal so far this season, getting a multitude of attacking returns already. Here's a cheaper alternative to Bakayo Saka. I have slightly preferred Bakayo Saka from open play of recent game weeks. Plus, he's also on penalties as well with Kai Saka, which does make him slightly more appealing. Moving on to the top transfers out now. Reese James, unsurprisingly, is the most transferred out player, as obviously he's going to be out till after the World Cup for Chelsea, which is very unfortunate for him, which will obviously see him miss game weeks 13 through 16. So for that reason, he's clearly a good transfer out. When looking for Reese James replacements, though, I'd probably be looking for the cheaper defenders. You could go up to Trent Alexander-Arnold at around 7.2 right now, but personally, I don't think it's really worth the money, especially when a lot of managers are looking to have at least one of either Salah, De Bruyne, or even... Erling Haaland up top as well is probably the more essential one. It's just depending on whether you go for Salah or De Bruyne. So to throw the money, I do think you'd probably go down to a 4.5 defender in place of Reese James. There are a couple of decent picks at this price though. Max Kilman is one of them. Wolves did concede two goals this morning to Crystal Palace, but they still have some good fixtures coming out from games 13 through 16. Otherwise, Timothy Castagna, he's been in great form for Leicester, four returns in his last four games. You could even go for Mark Gehe as well at 4.4, getting consistent starts for Crystal Palace, and they have some good fixtures coming up from now until game 16. So definitely some decent uh, defender replacements there. Then Leandro Trossard has been heavily transferred up by managers this game week, as he does have Manchester City as his next fixture. I can see why people were interested in him for this Nottingham Forest at home fixture mid game week. I'm uh, sorry, mid week. He couldn't provide anything in this game, which was a bit disappointing for him. 
But otherwise, outside of three games so far this season, he hasn't actually provided any returns for Brighton. So I don't think he's my favourite pick to have in the squad. I definitely wasn't a fan of him when I saw him being one of the most transferred in players. So for me, definitely a very good transfer out. Brighton's fixtures aren't the easiest, especially with Manchester City next game from now up until game 16. And with a couple of other decent mid price bid further options that we've previously discussed, even looking at the other players on this knee jerk of Foden, Sacco, and Martinelli, all decent replacements for Trossard if you don't have them in the squads. And then James Madison, definitely an interesting one to see him become one of the most transferred players this week. Even though he's going to be back for game week 13, he did just have the suspension for game week 12. If he's in your squad right now after that game week 12 deadline, I wouldn't be looking to get him out of the team just because Leicester still has some decent fixtures from Gamic 13 through 16, and now it's not the right time to get rid of him. If he's playing, he's all good, uh, ready to go for Gamic 13. There's no need to get rid of him, as he's still a decent pick in his own right. We've been in good format recently for Leicester. So with these most popular transfers in mind, let's have a look at our Gamic 13 transfer watch list. As we discussed previously, there is a couple of decent defender options if you're looking for a Reese James replacement. The first one here is Timothy Castagna. He's coming in at 4.5 million pounds, and he's got some very good fixtures coming up. Wolves away is his next one, a fairly decent one from a defensive standpoint. Plus, he's getting forward, getting touches in the opposition box, getting shots off, getting attempted assists off. So definitely a nice value player as a decent all-round pack package with attacking and defensive potential of 4.5 million. Max Kilman's other one, a little bit more expensive at 4.6, doesn't have as high attacking potential, but probably plays in the better defense for Wolves. He's got a good fixture of Leicester at home this game week, so definitely a decent defensive fixture in its own right. As we touched on, Phil Foden, definitely one to have on the watch list if he's not on your team. I'd be looking to get him in, as I think he's such a great value pick in the midfield, and he should perform it quite well over his next four matches. As we've highlighted here, he's expected 7.5 points in game week 13, and 27.6 six points over his next four games, which is very, very high. Mo Salah, another one that is projected to do quite well. He's got a good fixture of Nottingham Forest away this week. He's actually only expected 3.7 points in this game week, but outside of this, 27.6 predicted points in the next four weeks, so he's expected to do quite well, and a decent captaincy contender for most of these game weeks. I do like Eze, Azaha, and Gehi as that Crystal Palace sort of trio there. Eze was able to get himself a goal in his most recent game. He's getting consistent minutes for Crystal Palace. He's made it two goals in his last three, so he's in some good form. And at 5.6 million pounds, definitely a decent differential to consider especially after a strong Game Week 12 performance. On the other hand, Wilfred Zaha did get his goal in Game Week 12, which is good to see for him. And I think he's a pretty essential option to have from now until Game Week 16, as that locked-in mid-price midfielder at £7.5 million. He's one of my favorite picks at this price, and that is why he has one of the highest projected points over the next four with 18.9. As we touched on, Gare here at 4.4, very good value with some good fixtures. Everton away up next is a decent one from a defensive standpoint, so he is getting those consistent and it's once again for Crystal Palace, which is good to see for him. So I really like him at 4.4. And then Harry Kane remains on the watch list because his ownership is still only around 23%. One of the best premium options in the game, probably the second best premium option in the game right now, only behind Erling Haaland. He's got Newcastle at home next game, which is a good fixture. After that, he's got he's expected to score 21.5 points in his next four with 5.1 in game 13. So definitely a decent captaincy contender there. Thanks for watching today's knee-jerk reaction for Gamic 13. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to show support for the channel. Also, click the notification bell so you guys don't miss any future uploads. And look out for FPL Social coming up in Melbourne in February of next year. Tickets and information are in the description. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one.